I remember that. Hey guys, welcome to another iteration of the My Hero Academia manga chapter reads. Uh, we got uh, chapter uh, 368 uh, as the new release. I have Mark with me. Hi. And Mark, there's something that we do before every new chapter. And what would that be? Uh, recap episode! <laughs> I'm home alone. <laughs> I still remember the one where you like you yell, "I'm home alone." <laughs> I'm home alone. Yes. Let me go ahead. Uh, go back to uh three six seven real quick. Uh, that was the one with the uh, nice cover of everyone like tuning into season six. Actually, Which has crash animation from what we've seen. I actually haven't gone around to watching that. I know that's the one with Mirko and pretty much the I've whole seen operation. The clip of Mirko and I was like, damn. They have like a specific art style for the anime and sure they can't really do anything crazy like the shaded lines they do in the manga but i think it holds up oh, yeah, quite a bit they still do a damn good job mm. i'm just kind of looking at like the recent like chapters i'm thinking like i can imagine it like drawn like this if they keep the consistency up with the anime but they have uh in three six seven uh we had a shot of deku uh, just right before he arrived, uh, getting a, a ride from, uh, pretty much Swanaya and the entire force. So, they got out and gave him the pick-me-up, and, uh, Deku arrives, he does the smash, and, um, Deku's like, is everyone alright? And then he looks, and everyone's just, like, sprawled on the floor, and it's like, whoa, uh, and then you see Baka, you see, the, like, the card with blood on it, and he's like, oh no! And then his emotions start to act up, and he goes into that form that we haven't seen him do in a while since, like, the last encounter and fight they had with Shigaraki. And that's when, um, Mirio's like, hey, hey, quit it. Stop. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't gonna be, this ain't right. You're gonna be okay. Everyone's fighting out there. We're heroes. You know, Spiel. Hit, hit him up with the, the flashbacks. And <laughs> he thinks about uh, all the people who's, um, encouraged them even more recently, considering the fact that, like, a lot of a lot of the stakes are just kind of like with him this ain't the time for him to lose emotions he's got to control the anger and that's when he snaps out of it and he's like is Shigaraki in there all for one and that's how we ended that chapter and now we got uh 368 which um <clears throat> I guess we should talk about this <laughs> so it's a cover what? of um <laughs> cover Hold on, let me get the like the actual like name for this one. Cause it, I I don't remember this one. Inv Inv Invisible girl. Oh yeah, Toru Hagakure. We used to just simply call her Hagakure or Invisible Girl. But she's uh in the front cover. You know how um a couple of chapters ago we got to see like a face reveal. Um, the most notable stuff is like for me was like the noticeable like white eyelashes because of how it was drawn. Uh, her light hair and um, the way that they show it here is that she has like a kind of like a yellow but with a little bit of like pink highlights here and there it's kind of faded uh, but they showed the full like body of it in her hero costume and that's a uh... I mean there are a lot of people who are pleased and some people who are bringing that kind of stuff up of like hey listen um, <laughs> I get both sides I get it 100% I'm just going to throw my hat in there and just say that uh I get it, but I also understand that this is kind of... <laughs> Fiction? What? I was like, it's like, well, my, the issue oh, that sorry I about the echo, people, by the way. There are some people that see this as... Because the cover, she's obviously... It's scan, it's scandalous. It's, uh, <laughs> yep, yep. it's a little more risque. and But, of course, I contribute it to cultural difference, in a sense. Hmm. Because the age of consent in Japan is, of course, it's, I believe it's younger than it is here. At least yeah, in certain provinces. I, I hear, I hear it's younger, yeah. At least in certain places. I think it's 18 some places in Japan, but it's like 16 other places, which is similar here. We have different ages per state. Yeah, it's a, it's definitely a topic of discussion that uh, doesn't really have a solution to it. It's just simply a, uh, it's just simply a difference. And that's just how it is. And it's also... She's not a real person. She is just a character. Yeah, she's a fictional character, right. So it's not like... Some people would say this would be promoting pedophilia. I personally do not think it is promoting pedophilia. No. But yeah. Because he doesn't look like a child. 
like it it kind of like goes down to the fact that like manga uh has been developing a much more mature audience um but kind of like how shonen is as like a genre it's mainly like curated towards like teenage boys and slightly and like older than that and so what are we what are we a lot of the time when we're going through that age you know <laughs> Well, and, that, and all a lot of like the reason that they draw that kind of stuff is ch so it appeals to people. That's how like the works continue to keep becoming works. It appeals to the audience, and there are some hormonal boys in the audience. Um, to kind of just like further support that, but I I also understand that this is like, <laughs> let's like I'll just say like this piece in the fact that you know they do this so it promotes like the sh the show or the franchise and to continue to do that as far as popularity polls. This is one of the tactics to do so and uh, hagakuri here is kind of an example of one where it's like yeah it's it's kind of like overtly like that and it's being supported by like how her cork is her power is invisibility but can't really yeah. do that yeah, with her clothes so i mean it's like the same way with midnight midnight it had a function to it right so in a sense it, it makes sense in the in the in the series, but I also understand people who might look at this and be like, this is way too raunchy. I get that, 100%. To be fair, I've been around a while in the anime community. Long You've been time. a while? Okay. I've seen some shit. I, I've seen everything. <laughs> this is very tame. And, you know, I think the whole discussion of whether we should continue to regulate or sorry, not regulate, normalize this. Uh, that's a whole different discussion. I'm not going into, <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> the, the cover's there. So would you like, would you agree or disagree that this is tamer than some other things? Um, I think this is, I don't want to say like this, but I think it's normal. <laughs> like, and he's not like, and remember he's not, Justin isn't saying what you guys, what some people would, describe this is is normal no yeah he's just saying this just seems like yeah this is just average thing you would see in yeah, this is, yeah. It's, 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 i would it's say like it's kind of the, and like for like american culture it's kind of unfortunate that this is kind of the norm because like when you when you watch or read manga slash anime uh not respectively <laughs> uh you just this just is becoming part of that norm and the okay. reason for that is because they want to like boost ratings for a lot of folks who like this and are like yeah okay oh, cool. oh, yeah i'll support it and just helps the people who actually make the series, so. Yeah, I yeah, that's why another reason why I always say I think I also attribute it to cultural difference. Mm. I will say this is still, it's still kind of a, a yikes for me, but I get it. <laughs> I think, like, in my personal opinion, I don't think it's a yikes, but I can see, I understand that some people can see it that way, and I get it. Mm. But I personally wouldn't label it as yikes. <laughs> Cause yeah, yeah, that's all I can. <laughs> that's all I can really say. So, but uh, I do get where some people are coming from from their uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, I, I actually am curious as to why this, um, this, this was the cover, considering like what's going on like in the story so far. Maybe it's just to make light of it, or just simply like, hey, you know, we're getting to the tail end of the series. Uh, here's some things, you know. I know That's you guys have always wanted to see this. I know you guys have always wanted to see what she looks like in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Um, I was gonna say because uh, just the real quickest tangent, uh, in regards to the anime, uh, they have an opening for that one. I was able to take a look at that. Um, I just need to watch the new one. Yeah, the new opening. It's <laughs> you'll you'll hear it by the first like drum beats. You're like, this sounds. This doesn't feel like it fits <laughs> the what's going on right now. <laughs> Is it still good? Yes. But it, see, it does seem kind of off, but, you know, I'll, I, I'll grow into it. Yeah, be sure to check out um, Season 6. But yeah, uh, fast-forwarding to uh, the current chapter, uh, Chapter 368. Let's start with the first page. Back where uh, we're repeating Deku's lines, is Shigaraki still in there? Man, dude, the scarf is looking different now. Uh, no. It's like it, cloaked. Yeah, it's cloaked black whip over. I was like, whoa, is that even impossible? <laughs> With a little bit of maybe Fajian on it. Maybe, yeah, okay. Uh, Muriel's like, wait, what? And then all for Shiggy, like, really? That's your question? 
Tomura Shigaraki, you mean? No. No. No one by that name exists. Not anymore. I'll continue this page. The two have achieved a perfect melding, but perhaps it's because All for One has been alive longer that he's the one who's in charge. And they show illustrations of the fact that, like, it's it's interesting. It's like it is actually like the fusion of these two, and uh, All for One's taking over quite a bit, as it kind of looks like you're looking at like a sh a younger like Shigaraki. I forgot what was his uh, actual name. Tenko. Tenko or Tenko? I think it was Tenko. Okay. So Tenko or Tenka? I think it's Tenko. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're scheming, but you won't get your ideal pie-in-the-sky ending here. Looking Damn. like an Elden Ring boss. Why do you call us out? Why do you call Deku out like that? Yeah. All right, Mark, you can go ahead. All right, we see Izuku looking very serious forward. Then we see Mirio. Hang on. I'm not so sure about all that. When I made a rude accusation a while ago, thinking back to when he said he had no friends, it was like he was suddenly possessed by someone else. He started. He suddenly started raging and freaking out like a child. Nothing about that suggests that they achieved a the perfect melding. It's as if the harder we fought back, the more unstable he got. We see Shigaraki just kind of twitching like... And we see Izuku just like... Damn. Caught him immediately. Caught in 4K. Yeah. And then we see... Nana mm -hmm. in the vestige world looking and she sees her son's face on uh, Shigaraki's hand. You see, like, she she said, Izuku, and she sees it. She sees the eye in the hand. Like, she's, I'm sure, like, she's seeing that. I'm sure, like, she feels a lot of things about that. But she mm -hmm. just says, as she's looking at it, she says, he's still in there. As we see Shigaraki go, boom, get ready to jump at Izuku. Izuku's mm -hmm. like, oh, get Oh, my God. You take it? Uh, yes, yes, sure. Uh, so as you were saying, uh, Alvar Shiggy now is uh, charging at them, and Bro, that he, creates, is done. he creates a force pushing upwards so he can leap into the air and causes the entire facility to kind of like shake a Dude, little bit. The amount of force needed for that is nuts. We got people like behind the scenes. They're like, "Whoa, <laughs> what?" Hajime's still uh. Still focusing on her focused. work. Just laser focused. Yeah, that's that's me. That's me right there. <laughs> She's like, hey, what was that? Offer Shiggy's like, enough idle chit chat. I'll be taking back one for all now. Hmm. Oh, okay. It says smash. <laughs> I, I didn't see the H in the next page. Yeah. So it looked like Sam's. <laughs> I was like, huh? Yeah. It's, it's just smash backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, all the kanji that they're like drawing in here, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is a lot of illustration stuff. Um, Alpha Shiggy is breaking down the foundation right below and just you see rubble, smoke, all the sorts. It's so much that you can hardly like really figure out like where's where. <laughs> Which is their intent it's for sure. Big battle. Got a panel in the next page, Alpha Shiggy, and then we get, go back to Deku and he's like, know this all for one. I don't I won't let you have your ideal ending either. As something happens, something happens right now. You see like rings of like what seems to be a black whip like swirling around the big finger upon finger arms. As we get a little bit of context for that in the next panel. Uh Deck is saying I stored up the third's Fajin energy within the fifth's black whip. I didn't know you could do that. For a boosted binding combo. Like so he's got it wrapped around and he's 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 gonna do something fierce with it. And if I'm correct, this might be where I got spoiled. I only got one I'm so sad you got spoiled at this part. Yeah, but uh, I'll I'll jump into it once we actually see it. As long as you weren't spoiling the other thing. Oh, actually it wasn't this one. Anyway, he says black chain. Oh, it's, the, it's, the one, it's the other one I was hoping you weren't spoiled on then. No. Oh. Yeah. Is that oh. 
The black Amazing. chain is so cool. It is really cool. Well, he flung him. Oh, <laughs> is like in oh. I'll I'll just take these last two pages here. Enhance um enhance or not, the same trick won't work twi any it let go it was the black whip let goes of him. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> won't work twice, what? As we have Deku like sitting on one of the like bits of debris that just got flung out. This is happening in slow time, we know this. As we see um the second you can't even see Deku's eyes right now. It just like lit up. The second saying, "You've done this once. Uh, well, you're you're done once you use this. Take him down within five minutes, or else the world loses this war." And Deck is like, "I'm ready to settle this." Next right, page. All right, go ahead. The yep. seconds transmission. I did not expect this. We see the platform that Shigaraki is standing on starts doing something. We see Izuku's hand. He just the all of a sudden whoosh we just see we just see Shigaraki start lifting up Izuku is suddenly straight in him fist dead uh, in pause? his stomach <laughs> pause <laughs> we just see we just see Izuku's fist go straight into his stomach Got second it. gear third gear top gear so that that page is what got me spoiled because everyone was memeing about the fact that he just stole Luffy's move and Luffy's I always get the was, reaction I, image. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I knew, I knew that was gonna do that. I figured they were gonna meme that. Honestly, and then, I, I probably would have thought the same thing. But so, right. I'll I'll save my questions for later. But there we go. We see. But on top of gear, we see that Shigaraki is about to fucking fly. Mm. And then in the next page, the entire platform beneath them is just done. Izuku has just launched him rapidly into the air. And this, I found this interesting. Because you see, ah, like that huge sound effect, and you see Mario going, the sounds are delayed? And that made me think, possibly, that he's breaking the sound barrier. Yeah, that, that, they're, they're the speed that is just like... Yeah, it's achieving, <laughs> it's achieving faster than the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. Which means, if the sound is delayed, you're only going to hear it once it actually reaches you, because it broke the sound barrier. Yeah. And then we see Shigaraki coughing up blood. Cough, cough. What's he doing to me? Where'd he go? As he's looking around. This is nothing like that glowing energy from before. He's far too fast. Almost as if... You're up. Okay. Here's a second. No. It's a different beast than it was back in my day, all for one. That meta ability that changes a target's speed when touched. As we get, like, um, a little bit of the technique. Gear shift overdrive. Literally, you, you, see, oh, my driver. you see this boy like think of go press <laughs> but think faster <laughs> think faster than that dude it's so intense the, the way that they draw is like Deku his entire body he's focusing on like holding his fist steady for this like hit but his entire body is like all the way like reeled back dude it's just, I, saw, I was just like it's just his entire body just like displaced forward so quickly that they draw lines for all of that. Dude, the glowing eyes. And the fact that Alfred is still spinning right now <laughs> in and that you shot. You see the fingers are open on his face right now. Mm. He's like, oh. All right, here, here we go. Oh my God. I guess I'll take these last two. As Izuku Midori would put it, this is... 120 out of 100 percent jesus so he's going way beyond 100 right now <laughs> yeah he's able to uh really just tap into it uh the first is like brother let today be the day that we end this and deku hits the traditional detroit smash what detroit a way to end that smash. i mean this probably isn't the end end but i'm like that that's a that's a fantastic shot Yep, it was uh, 
it was um yeah his bro- it was the brother he was all for one's brother y- Yori- Yorichi who is telling uh you know he's telling his brother basically all for one he's telling all for one that okay it's time we end this oh boy like you know you've done this for far too long it's time to put a stop to it mm-hmm. and there, there's, a, there's a lot to talk about uh I, I guess really a lot of it kind of like focuses in on like Deku's abilities now Everything he's learned from just kind of going rogue for a little bit is like really got him to this point. Learning to combine the quirks together in a seamless way and similar to how Mirio learns to like compound like his abilities to do all these different movements. It's well, like Black Chain was like a nice touch for sure. Pretty badass. But obviously the big one, the second um, quirk, Transmission. Did not expect that. So, what what do we know about it, exactly? Transmission, so far, uh, what the other, um, what the fan translation mm. was able to deduce about it, and it makes the most sense. It essentially changes the velocity of its target. Of his target? So... Ba- basically, you change, you know what velocity is. You're right, right. But, like... Of his target, that's why I was thinking, like, hmm. I think that's that's probably why he touched his hand before, like, he shipped it over. Yeah, so he can increase the velocity of his fist. Right, so that's why he's able to achieve, like, a little bit more oomph to his punch. Yeah, also, for those the fact who, that he's using his the, fist, actually. Yep, and for those who aren't aware, velocity, re- rapidity of motion... Or operation, swiftness, speed, a high wind velocity. Basically, mechanics, the time rate of change of a position of a body in a specified direction. The rate of speed with which something happens, basically. So whatever... Basically, oh, sorry, go more, Basically, just packing more speed and power behind a punch. Mm-hmm. So that's just literally, like, on top of, like, anything that Deccan could just simply do, which is, like, whatever percentage he's at with one for all, like, strength by itself... Plus, like, the compounded, like, Fa Jin. Uh, I think those are the only, like, amplifiers. And then transmission adds to that. So It's like, yeah, he's putting on the One for All's already big power boost. He's putting on Fa Jin. And on top of that, now he's adding on transmission. Which, it does explain the that explanation of the percentages. Because uh, Deku can't achieve 100% by himself. Bajin helps him boost it to 100%, and like then 100. the extra 20% is with the, the crazy speed applied with transmission. Imagine if he really could go 100 and add in Fajin and transmission on top of it. You need a lot of resistance for that, too. Because <laughs> imagine that, being able to use all bite strength plus a yeesh. I mean... This is already wild as it is. And it's just drawn amazingly. Mm -hmm. Like, you can tell Horikoshi went in on this. Yeah, I I couldn't help but, like, really notice, like, how Kanji's drawn in this one, because they have different, like, styles to it, obviously. Like, from Smash to, like, the (laughs) WAP. And then the, the POW is a big one. Very, like... It's very constructed, but it's moving fast. <laughs> and now, but here's the other thing. Now, I think I understand why the second had a blaster. Really? Yeah, because we thought it would be an, em- an emitter type quirk. We were wrong. Mm. But think about it. It affects the velocity of his target. If his target is the projectile that he's shooting. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> Granted, it, it wasn't like this. But it does help boost the speed regardless. Yeah, it'd be like taking a bullet and putting a booster on it. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that or, I mean, like, we saw Shigaraki fly, like, mm-hmm. randomly. So I'm wondering if uh, the, the kachak, if you, if you watch that, the kachak, I don't know if that was Izuku moving so fast that he was there, or if that was him launching Shigaraki up, like, you can change the velocity of any object. It, it could have been like 
it could be a twofold thing where he like does it for himself and then he transmits like he transmits that to the fist which explains like the second the third and the top gear mm -hmm. i think it's one or the other it's either he moved so quickly we couldn't see him or it was he moved shigaraki up and then we did that but i'm a super i'm gonna put more money on the fist mm. but still that's you can see you can't even see him when he hits shigaraki like it's like wait what yeah i'm I'm looking at like those three panels of like the kachunk and then you just see all for shiggy just like stationary and then you just see like a little bit of like a white dust like right below him as he's lifted up very slightly so i think that is deku like spitting himself up because he is fast as it is but like from like this is the crazy thing the fact is, is that uh when he calls out the seconds transmission he's already like jettering a lot of like um what's what's that energy called um before oh, kinetic yeah. oh kinetic uh it's the rest of, yeah it's it's like the potential energy that's like the way he's bending down real quick he's already charging that up let me google that actually energy before kinetic what is that yeah. it's been a while since i've learned that I mean, right. You're, right. You're, you're right it's potential energy potential energy cool so he has that ready and the the crazy thing is like all that gets transmitted to the fist but he does need to like get there on, so, on top of that with the with the punch he's doing with the overdrive when he goes into the air for the detroit smash that means he's also he's also got the uh he's also got the uh what's it called what's it called what's it called what's it called hmm. centrifugal centrifugal force behind it hmm. so honestly he's just using his abilities and gravity to his advantage yeah the momentum, the angle of what he's going, the speed, it's all just yeesh. It's calculated. And they do say right here, like, you know, like he says, no, it's a different beast than, than it was back in my day, all for one. Yeah. The meta ability that changes a target's speed when touched. So that means he technically could change Shigaraki's speed. Yeah. I was wondering if that was what pushed, like, Shigaraki. But if it was also the explanation that, like, no, that's just, like, the power behind all of that. <laughs> then I think that's a lot more sat satisfying. <laughs> but he did tell, uh, he did tell Izuku, if you're going to use this, you best do it in five minutes. Right, so there's a, there's a major drawback to this. He's basically saying, like, your body's only going to be able to handle about five minutes of this. Like, I can only imagine, like, it's probably, like, I mean... <sighs> He can change other target speeds, so the drawback can also it can't always be like. Well, I was thinking like muscle fatigue. I think there might be something else. But otherwise, that I can only assume if you apply it to yourself that you obviously would just be like shaking after like a little bit of that. It's also because it affects your speed and like you know after, like if you are you aware of the term uh, terminal velocity. Uh yeah. You know, when an object reaches terminal velocity, that is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's like you know when you're re-entering the atmosphere. If you go in, if you go in at terminal velocity, you are more than likely going to die. Damn. So, it is very risky, especially like given like Deku's inheritance. Yep. Yeah, so that's like it could be just the speed at which he's going maybe it just tires him out maybe he could it's a risk it's of terminal velocity maybe it's a risk of breaking just overall your bones and body can't take the pressure mm -hmm. and i guess it does explain like what he was doing overseas second was like hey don't do that save that <laughs> hey 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 last resort <laughs> i guess we'll find out exactly like that trade-off uh next time for sure because yeah, we know all the other quirks so far have hit well Except for Float. I, I think Float doesn't really have much of a drawback. Does, what without... about Smokescreen? Does Smokescreen have one? Um, I'm not sure, other than maybe Control. Because it is just kind of like, it's to yourself, and it's in a wide area, so... And Black Whip's controlling your emotions. Yes. And then Fajin. Actually, I'm not sure about Fajin. <laughs> Fajin's more of a... Um, Maybe it's just simply your body. 
your endurance. Yeah, Bajin, I feel like because Bajin storing up kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. It's like you know you're basically a big gener kinetic generator. Mm -hmm. So that's or just kinetic, like... kinetic battery, you should say. Yeah, so you just simply have to do all that in order to make it work. Yeah, because you're basically like just move around a bunch to store up power and just. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can work with that. And then uh, we have transmission, which is uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure because I don't think not all it's quirks have useful. to have like a drawback like that, right? Because um, the first is quirk was really just um, the ability the to pass. It was initially to like stockpile. No, actually, his initial quirk was to simply pass down the quirk. Yeah, and it's, then it's and the then stock, all for one a pass down stockpile effect. No, well, no. All for one actually gives him the stockpile, and that melts with his uh passing down. Oh, the quirk. you're right. And that that becomes like one for all's base. So that's right. I forgot about that part. I think yeah. The fact is is that unfortunately the first just kind of had like a dupe quirk in the sense that you couldn't really do much with it. A dud. A dud, unfortunately. But then, uh, so that in and of itself is the trade off, I guess. Or maybe lack of because of the fact that you can't really use anything with it and then everything else um has its own drawbacks well sometimes maybe not sometimes the quirk is just simply I mean, there are some there's some quirks where the drawback is very meh and then yeah. some where the drawbacks is very eesh. right uh i'm trying to think of all class 1a's like drawbacks but yeah they I mean, all have they... drawbacks I, well, I think the only one uh that we don't really know too much is um shoji's which is the fact that he just has multiple arms they can extend out and there hasn't or really been og rose where it's just a tail yeah or Haga curries even or um codas that's true well yeah. i think his name is coda what are we talking yeah about i i think coda's like trade-off is just simply the fact that like you need to yell for the most part so and he's very shy yeah and you know that strange you're like you're your voice quite a bit so it's a natural type of trade-off i would say yeah it's more along the lines of there's trade-offs for everything some it, it depends i'd say the stronger it is the more of a trade-off yeah or even the possibilities it's like you know balance you have to balance an op ability within with a very strong you know price mm -hmm. it's like say for example with aries quirk uh mm -hmm. you know, she can only use it so often because of how strong it is yeah like there's a time limit like you know it's you know wait for her horn to grow back yeah or i guess even monomas in the sense that like he can only do a couple at a time and there's a time limit to it uh but otherwise it doesn't hurt him specifically moreover it's just how he uses it but of course yeah, it's just limited quirk trade-offs are also applied to that too yeah, like Monoma's got a very powerful quirk. Just a matter of it's just limited. Mm. And also the manga um, student. I don't know if there's like a specific trade off to that, other than just simply changing in like his face and everything like that. If he runs out of ink. If he runs out of ink, oh no! <laughs> he has to take like a whole week. A he has to he has to skip a week. I'm sorry. <laughs> you think he's got to skip a week? I'm like. What is what is this? Is he, do, is he doing the you know the thing? It's like no, you, know, you he, start hurting yourself. You start hurting yourself. You know you gotta take a week off. Yeah, you have, you have to take a you have to take a week off for the next release. But it, and then there's also Mushroom Girl as well. Um, I don't really know her trade off for it. I think they mentioned a couple of the trade offs in the training arc. I just can't remember at the moment. Right. It's like uh, I don't know if Tetsu I don't know if Tetsu Tetsu has a trade off. Yeah, and I think in some way Aries Quirk is similar to like Mirio's as far as like the risk involved. Mm hmm. Well, it's man. I mean, Aries Aries Quirk isn't a risk to her; it's a risk to others. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I mean, Bakugo's Quirk, like, you know, his would be. I guess Bakugo's Quirk, his drawback would be, you know, he can only take so much punishment. Mm hmm. Because, you know, those explosions do take a toll on your body eventually. From all the concussive force, it's like eventually, you know, you're going to start getting little shocks like shakes. 
Yeah. So I think everyone's trade off isn't always like a, oh, I'm, I'm going to get hurt for this. It's, but sometimes, or like it's limited here and there. So, and then, to, yeah. you know, Todoroki can either overheat or, or, you know, get, get hypothermia, get frost, <laughs> frostbitten as well. Get frostbit, hypothermia, or just overheat, heat stroke. <laughs> Gran Torino probably also had to trade off as well. It's probably it's like much more of a practical, like, you know, that just overexerts the legs a little bit. His height. His height. Bruh. <laughs> Gran Torino, how come you were tall back then, but how come you're now? It's because of my quirk. <laughs> Damn, well, it's, like, dude. It's, 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 probably, it's probably meant to be an old jab, and you know how people get smaller I, as they get older. Yeah. yeah. But like they made him draw mad. They made him like Ma Madam Foster level. <laughs> Madam, you did not just call him Madam Foster. Well, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I just want to ask you right now. Have you, did you ever see that one Foster's home for imaginary friends that showed how big she used to be? No, no. Dude, you need to look that up right now. It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> I better not get some weird images when I look this up. <laughs> Madam so Foster Rule 34! <laughs> I was gonna say, like, please don't let that be a thing. Alright, I'm, I'm on the wiki. Let me see if there's anything here. Uh, Nah, that's kind of difficult to really... <laughs> I can't help but imagine Madam Foster as Grant Torino. <laughs> That'd be fucking hilarious. Uh-oh. Wait, in that universe you could make unimaginary friends in the sense that like they're just simply copies of like works you've seen in the past. <laughs> so I'm just imagining someone trying to make the entire My Hero cast in Foster's home. <laughs> but Madam <Bruh>. Foster's Gran Torino. <laughs> I found one picture showing her. There's there is I found one of them where it shows her like back when Frankie was a kid. Yeah, let me Or like when the home when the home was smaller. I, mm. Like I'll like I'll put it in the uh, in your uh, okay like, on your messages yeah. on Discord. Like you'll see, like you could tell, she's significantly taller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, at the very least, the wiki is very tame about like these images, but there's nothing about like a taller, a younger Madame Foster. Look at that. Oh, actually, made that is. Oh my God. She's taller than uh the rabbit dude. I know she's nearly Mr. Harriman's type. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say, yeah, they did they did her just like they did Gretchen just like they did her. She got super small. I've never seen someone shrink that dramatically, have you? I mean, I don't really like keep track of that. Like, I know that like my grandma was pretty small, but then again, like you know, as you get older in the generations, uh, people just get taller because you know of things that they put in the food. <laughs> like, I I just want to know, like, because I I can understand maybe if you shrink because you start like hunching as you get older, maybe. I guess so. And I was like, do you really shrink? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, remind me in like a good number of years, and I'll tell you like how tall my mom like is <laughs> in comparison to like now. Oh, apparently we be apparently people say you begin shrinking as soon as as early as thirties. Whoa, damn! Men can gradu men can gradually lose an inch between the ages of thirty to seventy. I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> women can lose women can lose about two inches. I have to I'm have to do like daily stretching <laughs> to make sure. And then at around age eighty, it's possible for you to lose like another inch. <laughs> Damn. So, I mean, that's not too bad. Only like an inch or two. Not when you're so close to six foot. <laughs> you're you're so, like, no! When you're so close to six foot. <laughs> you're like, I was so close to greatness. <laughs> Such great heights I'll never achieve. <laughs> Whoa, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I think, I think that's pretty much it, though. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, this was a, like a really cool chapter just drawn in, not just for the action lines, but just simply everything. They have to like go into full details about, you know, how they draw their characters, 
like from Deku, like Shun Fa Jin and Black. Well, that's actually interesting. Uh, he does have. It's interesting that it made a chain. Yeah, the first page actually has like Fajin on the left hand side. He has Black Whip on the right. I was like, whoa, Black Whip is roped around like his neck, like the scarf. So it's just ready. I'm like, whoa. No, no, it's like it was really cool how he's seeing how he had that prepped. Mm -hmm. I, now I really want to see like an actual costume for him. Uh, incorporating everything. His future costume. His future costume. You were right about that one instance where we saw like a quick like glance at the future of everyone's costumes in the show Bakugo, but he has like something tied like behind his head. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, someone, someone pointed that out. I was like, "Oh shit!" The future. Please yeah. Homage. Also, uh, yeah, I, I want Bakugo to like jump back into this. I want a, like a back to back. We're fighting against Alpha Shiggy moment. Nah, you know what I want to see? Hmm. You want to see more peaches? I get it. I mean, <laughs> it's back to back, and then there's just like a thing of peach like sticking up there on the ground. That wasn't what I was thinking, but. Nah, like, hold on, let me see if I can find this. Is it it's the shot of Mirko? She's lost all limbs, but she's like, uh, uh, let me let, let, let's do this, let's, do it. let's throw it out. I'm like, calm down, it's just a flesh wound, it's just a flesh wound. No, like, I'll send you this, you know exactly what I mean. Okay, after that, I think we'll be good. I will say, uh, next chapter is ending or showing up in eight days, actually, so. Um, that might show up a little bit later on. I think we'll be able to cover it, like, whenever, but, you know. Oh, we got, we got Vegeta. You know, you know like, when they're doing the beat, we're doing the, uh, father-son Kamehameha struggle, and you see Vegeta up there blast self from behind. Oh, fuck. Ugh. Ugh. Vegeta, now's your chance. Yeah, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Bakugo, blast, he's like, hmm? Mm. <laughs> Go now, Izuku! Go now, you fucking nerd! Yeah, dude. That's all the quirks that Deku has. All of it. Yep, we finally learned the entire list. Mm -hmm. It's cool to know that not all of them are like the offensive, like, I will... <laughs> With all of these, I have many ways to kill you type of, like, setup. But there's definitely a lot of like good offensive ones. Fajin and transmission literally do everything. <laughs> two ways to boost. Yeah. It's basically like two, like none of them are severely OP. Like, I guess so. Alone, yeah, not by themselves. Like alone, no. they're not OP. Mm -hmm. But together, it's like eight together strong. Apes together strong. Dude, all might. If he had the audacity to tap into the other quirks like that. Uh, they, they said he just didn't need to. He was just a natural. It's true. He didn't need to. It was just purely like one for all just as it is. And he was so good. At it. But could you imagine if this man just like tapped into everything? <laughs> Absolute menace. Sure. Like Deku probably has a better handle at it, like right now. And... Even like when he hits peak, he's gonna be far better than like All Might. But like All Might mastering all that, it's because like you know, like that's what they say. Like you know, All Might was a prodigy when it came to one for all. Like he's his his body was just great for it. Mm -hmm. Which is really Whereas interesting because he was super lanky before then. Yeah, he was like your he was just your average built kind of guy. But like yeah. as you, when you he started working out, you can see he got little buff. He's like, oh wait, you build the muscle, you build that muscle. Hold you on. Build. <laughs> Burp. Burp. Bond? Burp. Is that Bond? <laughs> Burp. Burp. All right. I, I think that's pretty much good. We're, we'll go ahead and call it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a very exciting chapter. We're going to be jumping into this, uh, the next chapter as soon as it comes out in like eight days. So, alrighty. We'll call it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope to see everybody in the next one. Hashtag bye, everybody. Yeah.